Is there a Milligan in the house? Thank you. Um, uh, well, this evening, um, I was going to commence by reciting one of William Shakespeare's sonnets. And, uh, well, I, I thought to myself, I thought, why? <laughs> he never reads any of mine. Um, Christopher Logue's <coughs> reference to white, uh, white South Africans <coughs> happened to bring to mind, I, I, I didn't bring the story to tell it to you, but it reminded me of it, it's true. It happened to Mrs. Bernard Miles, the wife of Bernard Miles, the founder of the Mermaid Theatre, and uh, uh, she's violently anti-apartheid, as I hope we all are here. I hope you are. And, um, <laughs> We're trying a little bit of water before the budget comes in. <laughs> she went to uh, <coughs> Berwick Market and she made, made up her mind not to buy any more South African fruit. And she said to the chap behind the counter, have you got any pears? He said, yes, lovely, yeah. <laughs> lovely, full of nourishment. <laughs> I said, um, so, well, I, I'll, I'll take um, a pound of those pears. She said, lovely, Marsh, all the way from South Africa. She said, no, thank you. Today, <laughs> she goes South African, cheap, you know, all that uh, wog labour. You get it cheap, you know. <laughs> no, I, I just make a point of never buying anything from South Africa. She said, "Oh, you're nut," he said. These are the cheapest and the best. You get a full of full of meat, lovely, full of dripping when it look. He says, "Look, <laughs> She said, "No, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, sir. I just." I have a principle, I never buy anything from South Africa. He said, oh, well, I suppose I can't blame you. You know what bleeding niggers been handling them, do you? <laughs> <clears throat> well, now I'll start by saying the magic Coventry initiation word, fon. P-H-O-N. All after me now, please. Fon. We're <laughs> not going to have much fun tonight, are we? <laughs> Uh, you'll be surprised to know that in the audience tonight, we have Mr. Terry Downs, that nobody's doing here. Mr. Terry Downs, Light Heavyweight Champion of Great Britain. I'm, so, I'm sorry, madam, I... I... <laughs> what? <clears throat> All past the time. So thing called the worm. Actually, after this plethora of literary euphony I've had here, I feel a bit of a shame, you know, but after the Lord Mayor's show, you know what comes, and here I am. <laughs> it's called the worm. Wiggle, wiggle. Today I, s today I saw a little worm wiggling on his belly. Perhaps he'd like to come inside and see what's on the telly. <laughs> and now, uh, thank you. Um, it's the Chinese poem. <laughs> oh boy! I have never felt finer, said the king of China, coming down to dine. Then he fell down dead. He died, he did. It was only half past nine. <laughs> okay, two wongs don't make a white, I know. <laughs> Number three, military poem. <laughs> said so the general of the army, the general of the army, I think that war is balmy. So he threw away his gun. Now he's having much more fun. <laughs> Not funny, but sincere, you know. <laughs> What's that mean? Oh, PTO, I beg your pardon. Soldier Freddy was never ready, but Soldier Neddy, unlike Freddy, was always ready and steady. That's why when Soldier Neddy is outside Buckingham Palace on guard in the wind, pouring wind, rain and snow and being ready, Freddy is home and ready.
It passes the time. Well, where else are you going tonight in Coventry? Oh, 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 you paid to come in. <laughs> Maverick, after the famous gunslinger, partner. Maverick prowls at rumbling bowels <laughs> that thundered in the night. It shook the bedrooms all around and gave the folks a fright. The doctor called. He was appalled when through his stethoscope he heard the sound of a baying hound and the acrid smell of smoke. Yes, as I thought, you've been and caught an Asiatic flu. You mustn't go near dogs, I fear, unless they come near you. <laughs> I wonder, it's not very funny after that. <laughs> now, these are three epitaphs, one of which comes from your own Coventry Old Churchyard. I think I'll read that. The other two aren't very funny, but this is true. These two come from Coventry Old Churchyard. You must have been there. Well, I see you haven't been there yet, you know, but you'll get there one day. Here I lie, my three daughters. Killed by drinking Cheltenham waters. If we'd have kept wet and salts, we wouldn't be lying in these ear vaults. <laughs> and here's the one. Here lie the bones of Elizabeth Charlotte. Born a virgin, but dying a harlot. She was I, a virgin at 23. A remarkable thing in Coventry. <laughs> all right, all back to your own beds. This is scorflupus, a very rare disease. Folks, a very rare disease. <clears throat> there are many diseases that strike people's knees. Scorflupus is one by name. Comes from the east, packed in bladders of east, so the Chinese must take half the blame. <laughs> There's a case in the files of Sir Baddington Piles, whilst hunting a fox one day, shot up in the air and remained hanging there while the hairs in his socks turned green. <laughs> Aye, scorflupus had struck at man, beast, and duck. And the knees of the world went bong. Some knees went bing. And the knees turned to string from Balham to old Hong Kong. Should you hold your life dear, then the remedy's clear. If you offer some yeast, don't eat it. Turn the offer down flat. Don your traveling hat. Put an egg in your boot and beat it. <laughs> Getting worse, isn't it, folks? <laughs> what will I do? A thousand hairy savages sitting down to lunch. Gobble, gobble, gop, gop. Munch, munch, munch. Two peanuts walking down a road. One was assaulted. <laughs> it's the old ones that get them. You know, this is a little poem that actually, I'm not, my little boy said this in a, a roundabout way, and I wrote it down. It's not funny, but I thought it's rather poignant. It's called Rain. There are holes in the sky where the rain gets in. But they're ever so small. That's why rain is thin. <laughs> I think so. Uh, by the way, today we were supposed to have a, a guest celebrity here tonight. Um, Miss Jane Mansfield was supposed to be here, but she's suffering from a chest cold. Uh, well, I should say a heavy chest cold. <laughs> Those germs know how to live, folks. <coughs> 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 this one's called Illness is Good for You. You've all had it. Well, some of you look as if you've had it. <laughs> I've had it. Now then, one good appendicitis or a case of St. Vitus dance. Pays for a Harley Street surgeon. Vacation in the south of France. I wish I was dead. <laughs> teeth. English teeth. English teeth shining in the sun. A part of British heritage. I each and every one. English teeth. Happy teeth. Always having fun. Clamping down on bits of fish. And sausages half done. <laughs> English teeth. Heroes teeth. Hear them click and clack. Let's sing a song of praise to them. Three cheers for the brown, gray, and black. <laughs> That's what is known as repose. Fear in my language. <laughs> Porridge is another one. A much maligned food, folks. Why are you Scots? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. 
Why is there no monument to porridge in our land? If it's good enough to eat, it's good enough to stand. <laughs> On a plinth in London, a statue we should see of porridge made in Scotland, signed oatmeal, O-B-E. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of OBEs, I see that um, in the last birthday honours, uh, a well-known dance band leader got an OBE. And I problem me to write this very short verse, and it's in honour of Peter Sellers, it's called Victor Sylvester, OBE, oh my goodness gracious me. <laughs> uh, uh, this is one I wrote in the dressing room, it's called, um, oh by the way, this is something interesting, uh, I've got a, a, a thesaurus at, uh, at home which tells me that the, the famous last words that people spoke, um, Mr. Gladstone. You never believe what he said before he died, would you? Shall I tell you? I feel better now. <laughs> then he went. It's true, it's true. Now this one, it's a bit cruel. Alas, poor Helen Rubinstein, whose fortunes continually grown. By erasing all traces of age and all voices, can't do a damn thing for her own. <laughs> And I want to finish with a bit of a song now, folks. I, I've a dedication to a country called uh, Australia. That's right, Australia. Uh, I wrote this uh, when I was out in Australia a couple of years ago. Uh, it's unaccompanied in the key of E flat. <laughs> <coughs> I'll do it myself. <laughs> Australia, Australia, we think of you each day. <laughs> Australia, Australia, at what or at play? <laughs> we think of you in the morning <laughs> or in the evening or two. <laughs> we even wake up at midnight so that we can think of you. <laughs> Australia, Australia, though we're thousands of miles apart, remember if ever we chase you, you've got a jolly good start. You want to go on? We could finish here, I can go on, you know. Like to go on? Yes or no, it's up to you. Right? Well, I've been writing a novel. And, uh... <laughs> I won't read it all. It's, uh... Well, I have written all. So, it's called Pacoon. Uh, it starts up serious, but it goes into a sort of a, um, um, uh, another dimension. I'll try and get on with it anyhow. So it starts off with... No, I'll read the, the funny part. That's a bit... Read the funny part, he says, right? Um... <laughs> It's about a chap called Milligan. It's somewhere in Ireland, you know. It's a hot day, and he's a bit of a layabout, you know. It's, um, and it says, uh, it starts off, he's laying against a, a brick wall with a sort of hat over his eyes, you know what I mean? <laughs> it says, in a weak moment, Giacomo Kenyatta had once remarked, all handsome men are slightly sunburnt. <laughs> <laughs> Milligan, we're still friends. Um, <laughs> Milligan sat up. I think I'll bronze me limbs, he said. He rolled his trousers kneeward, revealing the like of two thin white hairy affairs of the leg variety. <laughs> he eyed them with a great degree, degree of satisfaction, dissatisfaction. Holy Christ, he said. What are these things then? What, what, what are these things here? He looked round for an answer. They are legs, I said. Legs? Legs? Holy Christ, these are legs, he said. Whose legs? For yours, I said, in my capacity as author. Author, he said? Author? <laughs> did you write these legs? <laughs> yes, I did, I said. Well, I don't like him, he said. I don't like him at all. I could have written better legs myself. <laughs> did you write your legs? No, I said. Oh, he said. So, he said, you got someone else to write your legs. Someone who's a, someone who's a good leg writer. <laughs> and then you write this better crap your legs for me. Well, it goes on like that. Uh, <laughs> Thank
thank you. Um, um, really, I'm a phony. I'm not a poet. You've come to that conclusion by now. I came to it a long time ago. Uh, what is really the poetry is these chaps we heard tonight. I think they're magnificent. They asked me for my name. You know, you, you know, like the, you put my name on the bill. And I'm really, I'm, I'm not the entertainment. I'm the sort of the name to try and get you in. Then you hear some real poetry. Uh, Jeremy Robson organized it. These boys played the music. These boys said the words. You came in here. We were a good audience. You were a good audience. We were good performers. Wonderful combination. And thank you all for coming. Well, now stand for what? The Queen? No? <laughs> Sit down for the Queen? <laughs> well, it's not my turn to carry on. Who else is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's the end. That generally was the end. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for paying. I'm very grateful. 